Hi, I'm Craig and I'm doing a little mini series here on the WRCCA rule set, which is a big fat document full of rules that newcomers to comps can find intimidating. This is the last video in the series and I su suggest you start at the start if you just come here. The first video at least gives you an introduction about what these rules are actually all about. And it also uh, aims to help you feel a bit better about being a bit lost because it's a lot of paper here. The good news is, the class one or the scale one rules actually only cover these two pages here. And I'm gonna take you through them right now. Let's do that. People often call scale one C1, which is a reference to class one, but that's from a different rule set. Here's what makes a scale one vehicle essentially. It's an off-road vehicle that looks a lot like a regular car you might see on the road. The idea with these things is to make the truck look as realistic as possible, like one you might actually see on the street. An example of a scale one vehicle would be this SCX 103 Gladiator, or as the rules state, a Camel Trophy Land Rover Defender. I've observed that pickup or ute bodies are arguably the most commonly seen in comp settings. So your Land Cruiser 70 series and your uh, Bruiser bodies and stuff like that, because it gets your center of gravity down nice and low. Now let's talk about the bodies of these vehicles. They need to be a scale representation of a real car from the front to the middle pillar. You're not allowed to make big changes to the guards, just small cuts to allow clearance. Truggy and cab only vehicles like this are not allowed in scale one, but flatbeds with full rail chassis are okay. So the um, BRX01, BRX02, those pickup bodies and similar, they're all quite okay. The Bruiser or the Mojave 2 from RC4 Drive, all okay as well. Now the bumpers need to be fitted to the front and the rear, and they need to be the same width as the hood. This one is okay, it's the same width as the hood. Now this hood gets wider, and I believe they measure from the most narrow part at the front. That would be acceptable but if this wasn't you might need to run one all the way back depending on club interpretation we we'll generally accept it at ours as long as it's hood width at the front that's fine you can remove the doors or the roof but you still need to have a windscreen and a full interior the vehicle also needs to have two headlights and two tail lights and you get extra scale points if they're working we'll get to scale points at the end of this the tires can't stick out more than 50 percent of their width beyond the body and Full coverage is preferable, but not required. Now the rules do get specific on body lengths in regard to total wheelbase and with how much cab and tray there is. Best to see the, rule do the rules document for specifics on any of this, because this is just an intro. The vehicles need to be built on a plate rail or C-channel ladder style chassis. And the chassis must be 75 mil longer than the wheelbase. And the wheelbase is measured axle to axle or wheel center line to center line. So, we're comfortably past seven because seven mils would, 70 mils would be just here to there. So it's, this is absolutely fine. Now your lower suspension links need to be straight. They can't be bent links in other words. That's something that might catch you out if you're not careful. Wheels need to be aligned vertically within the body and vehicles must be driven by a single motor, gearbox and transfer case. And those two things can be integrated, that's okay. Uh, but you can't have a motor on axle setup. So you need to have a motor and transmission inside the car. Separate or integrated transfer case is fine. As long as you have a drive shaft to each axle, that's quite okay. Steering is only allowed at the front wheels and the steering servo needs to be mounted on the chassis. So you can't have an axle mounted servo like this guy. That's not allowed, it has to be chassis mounted. You're limited to 1.9 inch wheels and your maximum external tire outer diameter is 4.19 inches or 106.3 mil max. There are heaps of C1 tires out there made just for this purpose, such as these Proline trenches, and they're precisely 4.19 outer diameter. All electrics need to be hidden when viewed from the top, the side, and through the windows. So you can see the electrics through this guy, through the windows, or the side, for that matter, you can see some wiring here. Or on this G-Made, you can see electrics through the windows. Not allowed, aside from the fact that this is a truggy and the wheels are too big, uh, this guy wouldn't be allowed because he also has overdrive, which we'll get to. Speaking of, uh, vehicles cannot have overdrive, can't have dig, but you can have remotely unlockable axles, that's okay. Uh, remotely unlockable diffs, that's okay, but the, you can't have overdrive. They need to be uh, same speed front and rear. Finally, let's talk about handicap points. Now, I've got a whole video where I built my Galande 2. You can see that here that takes you through my entire build and the handicap points. Drivers are scored on their course performance per the standard competition rules. 
but at the end of each course attempt, the vehicle's additional scale handicap points will be added to the score. So if you've done a good job with your build and gone on as many scale points as you can, up to a maximum of minus 24, that will be taken off your total, or added to your total rather. So what that means, even if you DNF on a course and get 40 minus gate progress, it's still not impossible to come out with a score under zero if you have a, um, a sufficiently high amount of scale points and you got far enough through the course before you failed. So scale points really matter in scale one. You should know that if a handicap item falls off, for example, if I was relying on the jerry cans or the max tracks here, if they fell off during a course, you need to stop, put them back on while the timer continues on the course and you'd incur a touch penalty for that, a repair penalty. Uh, your vehicle needs to finish the course uh, intact basically. And that's it for scale one of the WRCCA rule set. In the description below we've got a handy dandy uh, outline of our handicap form, how we um, scale these, how we mark these for um, handicap points. You've got a point list that will guide you in your build process and of course as always you've got all the rules as well. And from the first video in this series you also have the general overview which covers all vehicles unless the rules specifically stated. So once you start to look more closely, I'll hope you, you'll uh, start to find this stuff isn't quite as uh, intimidating as it may have been at first. The rules ensure that we all have the same limitations and capabilities, which is what makes the competition actually fun. So a common question once you start to get your head around this stuff is, can I do this or is that allowed? The answer is, it's allowed as long as none of the rules specifically prohibit you from doing it, and doing it doesn't contravene some other rule. So, for performance scale, am I allowed to have a locker in the rear that I can unlock the rear, rear axle? It's actually fine for almost all the rules except for the very last one that says only two channels, only for steering and throttle, which means I can't have a remote locker in performance scale, but I can have it in scale one. So I hope you found this little summary to be helpful. If you've missed the others, I've got an introduction just like this for all the other classes, pro, sportsman, we've got mini, uh, performance scale, even tough truck. The only one I don't have a truck for is super, which I've covered in the very first video in this series. Happy building, enjoy your next comp, it's a ball of fun. Guys, throw me a like, thank you so much for watching, and if you have any questions, throw them in the comments below, and I'll catch you next time right here on RCTNT. Thanks for watching.